வணக்கம் when a child is born with a cleft lip or palate or both the treatment will not stop with just surgery for the condition because the child is going to grow the jaws are going to grow the bone may get deformed the hearing may be affected and so many more problems so when do we deal with these problems and at what age should the bone problem be addressed so that means the treatment of cleft lip and palate will continue till adulthood yes so it would be good to have a road map or a guideline for management of cleft lip and palate right from birth up to adulthood and what procedures need to be done at different ages that is exactly what this video is aimed at this video is an approximate road map for the management of cleft lip and palate which includes the protocols of management at different time frames the first step is to make a correct diagnosis and also identify any syndromes that could be associated with the diagnosis the correct diagnosis depends on identifying the correct anatomical involvement in the cleft lip or palate If this diagram represents the lip, the alveolus, the primary hard palate, the secondary hard palate and the soft palate, this would be a cleft of the soft palate. This would be unilateral cleft lip and alveolus, bilateral cleft lip and alveolus, cleft of the soft and hard palate, unilateral cleft lip and palate. and bilateral cleft lip and palate having made a correct diagnosis we also need to look for associated syndromes which may sometimes be obvious but sometimes not the pierre robin syndrome associated with micrograntia glossoptosis and cleft palate or high arched palate without cleft the stickler syndrome characterized by flattened facial appearance myopia glaucoma cataracts or retinal detachment and associated with hearing loss van der wood syndrome which are characteristically associated with lower lip pits syndactyly congenital heart disease and ankyloglossia or the de george syndrome which is associated with cardiac anomalies like interrupted aortic arch truncus arteriosus or the tetralogy of fallo there are many other syndromes that need to be looked for also so we have completed the first step that is we have made a correct diagnosis and identified the associated syndromes we next need to plan the chronological sequence of management of the cleft lip and palate that means we will have to make a road map for the management of this condition along with the growth of the child but knowing all these steps alone is not enough we also need to understand the significance of each step and that means we need to know what is the procedure to be done when is it to be done how is it to be done and why is it to be done there is no single chronological sequence of management of cleft lip and palate almost every center managing high volume cases has its own protocol in 2016 the all india institute of medical sciences put up its own cleft lip and palate anomaly protocol in india we shall now see a protocol that is mostly based on this particular sequence nowadays even before the birth of the child with a cleft lip and palate advances in fetal imaging have made it possible to diagnose a cleft lip and palate in the intrauterine period or the prenatal period itself when identified thus these mothers have to be referred to the cleft lip and palate or plastic surgery department where a counseling of patients needs to be done by the craniofacial team or the plastic surgery team along with the social worker involving the parents at the same time we need to refer to the geneticist who may be able to identify anomalies when the cleft palate is identified on birth of the child the same instructions need to be followed 
as with the prenatal diagnosis that is referral to the cleft lip and palate team or plastic surgery. Counseling of parents needs to be done also and referral to the geneticist should also be done. Along with all these, the mother needs to be given advice regarding feeding either with a palatal obturator or a feeding appliance because the children with cleft palate may not be able to create enough suction to be able to suckle the milk from the breast. Within two weeks of birth, we need to start what is known as pre-surgical infant orthopedics which is done by the orthodontist. The aim of this step is to approximate the lip and alveolar segments and reshape the nostrils to facilitate primary surgical repairs when it is done. These can be achieved by one of three techniques. The use of the LATAM device, techniques of nasoalveolar molding or lip taping techniques. The other procedure that can be thought of in this early period is the procedure called lip addition. This is not a classical cleft lip repair but it is indicated for children who are born with very wide cleft lip either unilateral or bilateral so that the width of the cleft could be reduced and this could yield better results when the classical cleft lip repair is done later. By about 3 months after birth, we need to plan the cleft lip repair provided all the conditions are met. This cleft lip repair is done along with anterior palate repair and correction of the nasal deformity. Correction of the nasal deformity in this stage is known as the primary nasal correction. It must be followed up with application of a nasal retainer for 6 to 12 weeks. After the formal cleft lip repair is done, we need to follow up with two important steps. The first is evaluation of hearing problems which starts at this particular age. This evaluation must be followed up for 3 to 4 years at least. These hearing problems occur because the muscles that open the eustachian tube at the pharyngeal end are also inserted in the palate. Because of the cleft in the palate, these muscles are not very effective and this leads to infection entering the middle ear known as chronic otitis media. This leads to hearing problems. The options of management of these hearing problems are either an insertion of a grommet which helps in drainage of any collection that occurs in the middle ear or the use of hearing aids. After the formal cleft lip repair, along with evaluation of the hearing problems, we also need to start on orthodontic management. This is the stage of primary dentition that is from 6 months to 6 years. So management at this stage with orthodontics will help to correct the arch width incisor alignment and correct any cross bites in the primary dentition as shown in these pictures taken from literature. By 9 months, we need to plan the cleft palate repair. Correction of the cleft palate is important as is realignment of the muscles and muscle repair. Along with the palate repair, the grommet insertion may be done to help drain the otitis media also. Following the cleft palate repair, up to 2 years of age, we need to work on the speech assessment and therapy because this is when the speech is starting to develop. This period can also be used to repair any secondary palatal defects like palatal fistula. Small palatal fistulae can be closed with local flaps. But if the palatal fistulae are large, they need to be closed with a tongue flap and that is not to be done at this age. They need to be done a little later at around 10 years of age. From then on, up to 6 years of age, correction of residual lip deformities may be done, like the notching that is seen in this child. The second thing is, we need to continue on the speech assessment and include nasoendoscopy 
as a diagnostic tool. This step becomes particularly significant now as the final speech assessment needs to be done when there is a sufficiently long and mobile soft palate and the patient has undergone at least 6 months of sufficient speech therapy. The three major tools of evaluation of the speech in cleft palate children are speech recording, nasal endoscopy and video fluoroscopy and these are ideally done in this particular window period of 2 years to 6 years of age. If the speech of the child is still not corrected or comprehensible, repositioning of the palatal muscles with intravelar veloplasty needs to be done if it has not been done already during the cleft palate repair and if it has been done already and yet there is a speech impediment, pharyngoplasty will have to be done. At around 6 years of age, the period of mixed dentition starts. Here again, the orthodontic management will be needed to play a major role to create space for the erupting teeth and to achieve this, maxillary expansion or protraction devices will have to be used. You can see in this example of bilateral cleft lip and palate where the arch is totally collapsed, good alignment is achieved with orthodontic management during the period of mixed dentition itself. By about 9 to 11 years of age, we need to plan the important step of alveolar bone grafting. Though this age is prescribed for alveolar bone grafting, the ideal time when this bone grafting is done is when the canine adjacent to the cleft has completed one half to three fourth of its root formation. This procedure is done in children with the cleft involving the alveolus also. The mucoperiosteal flaps are raised from the edges of the cleft. The gap in the bone is filled with a bone graft, usually an iliac bone graft and the raised mucoperiosteal flaps closed carefully over the graft. This bed of bone will ensure proper growth of the canine tooth. By about 13 to 16 years of age of the child, we need to plan the orthodontic or orthognathic surgical management. The orthodontic management is very important because this is now the period of permanent dentition. Alignment of the arch is done for the final time. This picture shows the alignment that can be achieved by orthodontic management during the permanent dentition phase. The orthognathic surgery is usually for correction of the retruded maxilla. This can be done either with a Lefort 1 osteotomy or procedures distraction osteogenesis. By about 16 to 18 years of age, when the soft tissue growth has been completed along with the bone growth, two types of procedures will play a major role. The first is orthognathic surgery. This involves a correct evaluation of the problem, like in this example, where there is atresic maxilla involving the premolar and the canine, overjet of 2 mm. 50% overbite, mandibular midline deviated 2 mm to the right and maxillary midline deviated 2 mm to the left. Orthognathic surgery can correct these problems as shown in this example from literature. Along with the orthognathic surgery at this age, rhinoplasty that is correction of the nose or genioplasty that is correction of the chin protrusion can be done. Similarly, secondary touch-up surgery for the palate like for instance large palatal fistulae can be corrected at this age also. That is because it is possible to get these sequelae following the orthognathic surgery or the orthodontic procedures. And most importantly, after correction of the arch, after correction of the soft tissue problems, the patient must be sent to the prosthodontist for replacing any missing teeth. 
This will complete the management procedures for cleft lip and palate. So you would have noted the role of the plastic surgeon, the orthodontist, the facio maxillary surgeon, the ENT surgeon, the nutritionist, the prosthodontist and the dentist in the holistic management of cleft lip and palate and you would also have noted the timeline of management right from before birth sometimes to up to completion of growth that is say 16 to 20 years of age. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please do click on the shown links to see more such interesting guidelines and roadmaps. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning, hand surgery, plastic surgery, trauma surgery and ethics.